So hi everyone, this is the uh, last session, but also important that this session is about how we work as an institution to make sure every single student is globally competitive. Because as we know, it, it takes a village to raise a child and uh, getting everyone to proficient is something we can't do just by one person and we need the whole institution or the whole group to be involved. So we came up with a quick survey or just a quick uh, tool for, for schools to look at what are the different areas where we need help in and we need to improve it and, and, and how do we get there. So before you start answering the tool, uh, these are the areas that we're talking about. So we have five areas. One is institutional commitment because management must be aware and they must also know what these international standards are and they have to commit that, hey, th this is important to us, right? This is important that our students have a better language proficiency than say our ASEAN neighbors like Vietnam and Thailand. Second is this is important, student language placement, that it's no longer just based on you know, how good am I compared to my seatmate, but they understand that, hey, I want the CFR B2 because that's what people around the world are aiming for and I want to compete in the post-pandemic global marketplace. So that students know where they are, that they're not saying, hey, am I, what, what am I, am I good? Am I bad? And good and bad, these words are proficient. These words aren't as helpful as knowing, are they A1, A2, B1? or B2, it's better that they know their level. Three, that language teachers are proficient in the language. Maybe they'd like to be B2 or C1 uh, before teaching, you know, say college students and, and they can create programs that have communicative teaching practices. Four, student language training effectiveness and availability. So two things, number one, that they're available, that if I need 400 hours of learning it's somewhere right like at least there's a link to a youtube channel but somebody knows where all these resources are even if it's just a poster that they put up this is where the resources are uh that that would be enough and second effectiveness and saying if i'm an a2 learner i'm not going to get content like purposive communication which is c1 Right, so at, at least people are matched to their level of ability. And lastly is student quality assurance. Do we really want to graduate students who are CFR A2? Or say maybe they take a, a test before they graduate and you know, any test or even some sort of assessment with a teacher and saying, if I am CFR A2, maybe it doesn't make sense for me to graduate yet. And uh, we already saw that they doubled their salary just, you know, speaking the lang speaking English or speaking only one language, right? It's like a jump of times two. Uh, maybe they want to learn English over the summer before getting their degree. Okay, so let's start with the first. Key area one would be institutional commitment that senior management is aware and they set international standards based on the CFR and they can understand that data. So we put four points under key area one. It's that senior management is aware and they can set CFR targets. What we you know what target should be each, should it be B2 for all, etc. Uh, 1.2 is they understand what the CFR framework is and at least ASEAN CFR benchmarks that they know what, what's Malaysia asking for. What's Vietnam asking for? What's Thailand asking for? So they're aware and they can make decisions not based on what we see around us, but based on the post-pandemic global workforce, what their students need to compete. Okay, 1.3, that when they get the data, they can understand, right? Like if 30% of students are in A2, they know what that means. And 1.4, that they can see they can look at the pre-test and post-test, maybe first year, these are the scores, fourth year, these are the scores, and then they can actually understand did these kids improve or not. 1.4. <clears throat> I wrote, and, and you might want to take a picture of this. This is uh, representing TOEIC and TOEFL, um, but 
at least for senior management, this is important for them uh, that they can see that there's these number of institutions using, say, the TOEIC or CFR tests to really check uh, where their English language levels are. So this is probably nice to take a photo and show them that, hey, these are the Philippine schools doing it. These are the Malaysian universities. This is Thailand. Uh, what's stopping us? So th this is very helpful for senior management so that they know they're not in a vacuum and there's a lot of universities already using the CFR. And, and this is just the TOEIC test. These are all uh, TOEIC test users. But maybe, you know, when you add in the other assessments, also CFR, this list will grow even bigger. Okay, second, student language placement. So, <clears throat> um, a lot of you, well, some of you know how expensive international English assessments are. Like, um, uh, say the TOEFL test would be $200, IELTS, maybe $200, $250. So ETS, ETS, the Educational Testing Service, uh, develops PISA. They, they develop a lot of PISA test items. They, they are the developer of the TOEIC test and the TOEFL test. So this is really the best in the world type items. And they give a free test on, on their website. So if you actually type, um, I, I think it's going to be called the TOEIC test projector. I'll, I'll probably put that in the description below. You can take a free test to find out what is the CFR level. So when we actually say key area two, do students know their score? Uh, I'm showing you this because it's free, right? Students can get started and it, it's just important that they know what their level is rather than going their whole life and saying, I don't know what my score is. I just know I'm nosebleed, but what is nosebleed? Is that A1 or A2? And they don't even have a target. So them knowing what their score is, what their target is and the resources to help them get there, that's really what, what we want to look at. So key area two. 2.1 that they have scores based on any assessment. So again, we discussed the um, self-assessment grid that you can give to the registrar and just say, can you just add this when they admit? They can just write, what am I, A1, A2, B1, B2, right? There's like a self-assessment grid or a free assessment or, you know, probably, or they can actually take one of these standardized tests. So two out of the three options are free right? Second, 2.2, that maybe in the end, uh, for post-test or, or secure test or test to graduate, uh, then you can no longer use free things, right? Because they'll just, they, you know, it introduces a lot of bias when, when, when it's tied to a decision. So when it's tied to a decision, maybe they, they actually have to take something proctored because then, you know, it, it, their scores really do have a meaning and and and, and it would reflect um, uh, on on what would happen based on their scores. A third, I guess this is that language teachers are able to meet minimum language standards that are being used in ASEAN, that would be B2 or C1, and then they, they have programs based on communicative teaching practices. So here, Maybe full-time language teachers, they should have CFR scores um, just as high as what a CN is asking for. So a CN tends to ask for a B2 or a C1, that's 3.1. 3.2, that they have received communicative skills training. And 3.3, that they can actually deliver communicative-based teaching programs. Okay, so... Um, it's not super duper hard to create a CFR unit. So here you can choose, say, a situation like home or family. I'll actually make this two and that would be three and then that would be four. And I think PowerPoint's being interesting. So here, choose a situation or theme like home or family. That would be the theme of a unit. Um, write objectives that learners can do. So th these would be um, Output-based measures, they can describe members based on physical characteristics. They can describe who owns certain objects. So that's actually teaching them things like adjectives and possessives. 
and then you can you can choose things from the equals core inventory as well like your like regular plurals possessives and then create lessons based on the theme so here the theme would be home or family and then have a listening reading speaking writing so maybe have an authentic listening activity where, where they hear something uh, a writing activity where they have to write like who owns what you know an authentic speaking activity when they have to discuss and say okay my sister owns this and a reading activity so uh, that would be a communicative based um, skill or, or unit design okay key area four it's really students are getting learning appropriate for them so we discussed this that we want skills that are not too easy or not too hard. So when it's too easy, they get bored. When it's too hard, they get frustrated. So we want to give them material appropriate for their levels. So an A1 learner or an A2 learner should not be receiving difficult content, like say purposive communication, which is C1 level type work. So because they're going to get very frustrated and it does lead, when they're frustrated, it does lead to higher dropout rates, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, here, so key area four, students are aware of what their level is and they're given instruction appropriate for their particular level. Okay, so key area four, students are aware of their CFR level and the relevant ASEAN CFR standards. So if they're saying nosebleed, A1, A2, and say, you know, this is what they want in Thailand or Vietnam. What do you want for your life to compete or not compete? Um, and, and I think some of the videos I shared of, of students actually, you know, um, competing and saying even in foreign countries is good to show them that you're not just competing with the person next to you, but in the post pandemic world, it is, a, it is going to be a global, a globally competitive landscape. Okay. 4.2 zone of proximal development. You're receiving instruction based on your level, not too easy, not too hard. 4.3, that they have resources available. So this is just saying that, okay, they know where to go. If I'm an A1 learner, I know where the Duolingo app is. If I'm an A2 or, or B, you know, if I'm a B1 learner, I'll, I'll go to this YouTube site or the open educational resources just so they know where they can find material at, at different levels. So that's making it available and, uh, you know, due to a lot of time constraints generally and cost constraints, we want to sh check the self-paced format. Um, so, you know, so if we can't squeeze in those hours, they can do it self-paced. And 4.4, students have enough learning time available. Maybe it's about 200 hours from A2 to B2. Sounds like a lot, but I think it's doable. Summer breaks, Christmas breaks, lunch breaks, it, it is doable. And last is quality assurance. Does the school know or have data on what the CFR levels are before graduation? So again, we showed that there is there are places to get this for free and it's just a decision of the school. Am I comfortable with a BS education graduate with a CFR A2 score, right? It's, you know, am I comfortable with that or do I want to give them remediation before they graduate so that's really um when we say quality is never an accident it's the result of intelligent effort the effort is i guess collecting the cfr data and saying okay what are we going to do with that uh prior graduation or maybe third year are we going to say a2 is okay to graduate or we're going to say maybe we should give you a little bit more instruction or you should do some more work in the self-paced format so here we go that the students have CFR scores based on any assessment, right? 5.1. That could be the free or self-assessment grid, or they can take a, a secure international assessment. 5.2, ideally, because it's good practice, when it's based on a decision, you need it secured and proctored, right? And then lastly, that, you know, based on the scores, um, that maybe there's a remediation program in place or just a general guideline. What do I do if I don't meet the scores? Okay. So here, uh, this is just an example from Korea. 
Um, because now with, with UNIFAST or, or with some laws, everyone's a scholar, right? If everyone's receiving a university education for free, then generally everyone is a scholar. So this, this might be a good, um, a good reading list or just something good to show students that, you know, um, they're required. This is in Korea. So to get their scholarship first year, they have to start on 650. And every year they have roughly a 50 to 90 point improvement. So here's 620 as a freshman, grow by 90 points, a freshman to sophomore, grow another 50 points as a junior, and then grow 90 points as a senior. So um, that's part of their scholarship activities to grow 90 points every year. And roughly that's the jump from B1 to B2, right? So uh, that, that is their goal to, to have the their scholarship. And this is in Korea, a minimum B1. And to graduate, they have to hit a B2, right? Okay, so uh, lastly, um, it's important that multiple departments are involved. Just to summarize, the red to improve language skills, the registrar to help you collect data. As well, senior management has to be involved, that, that they have to know what these scores are, how to analyze them. Student placement has to be in place as well. Students have to know what is my score, right? Uh, how do I improve things targeted to my ability? Can there be a remediation program? And then lastly, QA, quality assurance policies. Do they want, do we want A2 students to really graduate and represent what a graduate from our school is to the world? Whew, so that was a lot. And I'm going to end with this. Um, so if you have questions uh, on some stuff related, so here, this is a nice, cute way to get started. Uh, I worked on the... English uh, curriculum, English for Tagalog speakers for Duolingo. Uh, questions about that? Feel free. Um, we're we're for the participants of this uh, these workshops. Uh, there are grants for for you know a few TOEIC assessments for like a research grant if you want to find out what is the score of of my students. Um, lastly, CFR related questions. So here is my email. Uh, and just feel free to email me. Thank you very much.